Hey guys, July 23rd, 2021, The Jim Baker Show. Hello, and welcome to The Jim Baker Show, coming to you from the village of Morningside, USA, snuggled in the beautiful Ozark Mountains. Today, our special guests are Pastor Paul Begley. Our dear friends, Derek and Sharon Gilbert. Our co-hosts today are Mondo De La Vega, Lori Crable. And now, please give a warm welcome to my parents and the host of The Jim Baker Show, Jim and Lori Baker. And I want to welcome all of our beautiful audience to the studio <laughs> yes. audience today. Thank Hi, you everybody. for being here in Grace Street. Yes. We have a great show lined up for you. You don't want to miss it. One of America's great pastors, Paul Begley, is here. Woo! We are excited. Fourth generation preacher ordained by my old friend, Dr. Lester Summerall. Yeah. Wow. My land. He's been gone for quite a while. I know. I was one of the last ones to get in. I think six weeks before he died is when he laid his hands on oh, You're kidding. Wow. Oh, that's really You're a young precious. guy. You're only in your 50s, right. so you've been ministering for 37 years since you were a teenager, right? Right, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow, we're glad to have you here. We are. You're, he's known for his gifting mm -hmm. in evangelization and Bible prophecy. His program is Coming Apocalypse is the name of it. It's on the PTO Voice of the Prophets Network. Yes, it is. Thank God. Yes, it Everybody is. who's anybody is on that network now. The network is growing and growing and growing. Dozens and dozens of new st programs coming the, the, the last month or so. That's right. Wow. And it, it is just going to be sold out. It's literally going to be full. And then with the with the new uh, shopping network, right, which is on faith that based. stage, mm -hmm. it's, it's faith-based, mm -hmm. but it yeah, pays the bills too. for all the Christian Sue, television. Know. I've been thinking about this for like 50 years. Right. No joke. Tammy Sue actually has slow. the original paperwork from 1986, <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, <laughs> yes, that's too, right. right? You have them in the hidden vault. And I do. Anyway, but she really does. I've, I've seen them. I showed up, them where to you. You did. And um, well, one of the last were, things in 1986, I did right? You was, had this idea. We had the shopping a, network there, right? To do a, a faith-based shopping And when we lost network. everything, we had the conveyor belts. We had we had nothing. We 1986. That was way before you Bob know, the and Jeannie other shopping Johnson networks. were going to be part of the yeah. whole thing. They were going to be singing, and, and it was going to be a singing <laughs> show as well. So, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I was still going to be singing. It's still going to be singing. Tammy Sue Baker. That's and, right. And, and they've asked me to host once uh, in a while. Wow, so I am going to introduce some new. I want you to co-host with me one day, Dad. Oh, what right. that be? Oh, that would be great. Do I get yes. to preach a little bit? Yes, I'll let you preach. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be great. You know, the Christian bookstores of so many of them, thousands of them have closed, mm -hmm. and it's so we're opening up a big. Shopping network. And what a, you got to get into deals, and the more you shop, the more you support the network. You know, right. you know, it's funny. I, oh, I uh, this is Derek, Derek and Sharon Gilbert <laughs> here with us. I don't, I don't often talk about this, but uh, back in 1986, when I was uh, on the air on radio in Philadelphia, uh, just as a kind of a gag, I, I answered an ad for a uh, uh, an audition for a new television network that was starting, and they actually offered me the job. It turned out it was one of the big shopping networks, the secular shopping networks. It was QVC. Uh, yeah, of course. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and I asked them, I said, well, can I stay on the air because, you know, I, I don't want to give up my radio job. They said, no, you'll have to, you'll have to quit. Like, okay, well, no, I'm a radio guy. So I could have been one of the original hosts oh, on I QVC, could, but oh, I turned I it down because, it now. Yeah. Well, that, well, guess but what? now here we are. You know what? Well, guess you get what, bored, Derek. We have a job for you. Can work you. In <laughs> <laughs> we need you to come on control. over to the shop at Once in a While Studio C and uh, come on over. Love it. That's great. Wow, you guys are, are growing and growing. And, and, of course, you have your own network. Skywatch and, TV. But, well, Skywatch TV is a studio that we produce a lot of content. A lot you, of content. In right. fact, you know, Cy Friday's been on the... 
the PTO mm -hmm. network for a yeah. long time. Yes, yeah. And of course, uh, Unraveling Revelation yes. is on there. And we've got a brand new show that's getting ready to air on there called so, The Bible's Greatest Mystery. That's exciting. Great, great. We're thrilled to have you here today. You're our they dear friends. Them. You're more like family than, they really, than guests. They really are. You've been around here so much, and we just love you so much. Mm -hmm. And your friend Paul Bagley is here. Uh, he he is your friend. Mm -hmm. And, and, you, and how long you guys friend. have been friends? I know he well, should time. be your friend. He, he is now. Really I am your friend now. <laughs> <laughs> Good to have you here. Right. With us. We, we met Paul for the first time at uh, a conference that was organized by our friends Mike Kerr and Jeannie Moore. Right. Uh, their ministry is called Hear the Watchmen. And this was back in, uh, what, about four or five years ago? About five years ago, I think. Yeah. At least five, yeah. And so we, we first saw Paul uh, speak and preach at uh, one of these uh, conferences. And, and we probably do, you know, up to COVID, we were doing five or six of these a year. And Paul would yeah. often be at the same conference. And boy, he is... Anointed. A, yeah, yeah. You know, the anointing is so powerful once it gets in anyone's life. And the more we allow God to have his way mm -hmm. in our life, um, you know, it's unlimited what God will do. So true. You know, it's unlimited. It you, really what is. What you least expect is probably what God will have you do. Isn't that true? Come on, Moses. Get off the backside and go get him. Right? <laughs> oh, boy. He's going to preach. <laughs> if, if you go to our internet, you're going to be able to see where our programs are. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. The, website, right? the, the you, voice you can, of the prophet. Absolutely. So you can go to PTL Network, and there is an icon there that shows the shows, the channel listings, the schedules, and anything that is airing live on the PTL Network. You can find it on ptlnetwork.com, or you can download the app on your phone on the go. This is the best way to watch the PTL Network. And your show is called The Coming Apocalypse. Absolutely. Because it's coming. <laughs> It is coming. It is coming. See, honey? And I just read on the internet that this is the safest place in the world yes. for the apocalypse. It well, I'm is. glad I'm here. It is. It is. Yeah, you come to the mountains. I right know. Time. Well, I think right here at, uh, right at this location mm -hmm. is probably mm -hmm. the safest wow. because and of the presence didn't of God. Pick it. You know, Corey Ten Boom was flying over this area years and years ago. Oh, yeah. And she looked down and God said, there's going to be a great move of God come from right down there. Wow. And, and it was here flying above the Ozarks. And she told the pilot to land and he said, oh, there's no airport that can't land. She said, land. God says there's an airport. <laughs> and, and so he looks over in his charts and finds a dirt field, which I think probably from the college, you know. Mm -hmm. College the of the Ozarks, going. yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so he landed and that prophecy has been told over and over again wow. now. Mm -hmm. And God has fulfilled it. And you guys are, how far from us are you? A few miles, aren't you? Uh, we're about an hour. I mean, mm -hmm. as the crow flies, it yeah. may be 25 miles. But right. uh, the crows don't fly, you know, the highways that we have to take. <laughs> that's, that's the truth. When you come to the Ozarks, it's but, windy but, hills. So here they have this great network now just down the road from us up here in these hills. And then... Uh, Billy What's Brim. Billy Brim mm -hmm. is just across the valley the other direction, mm -hmm. you know, and she has Prayer Mountain up here in these hills. Yes. And she's doing an amazing job. Wow. In fact, her, her granddaughter, mm -hmm. right? Hannah Brim has a TV show on our network. Her granddaughter, yes. Uh, she's young and she has so much to say for such, such wisdom for such a young woman of God. God's doing great things. Yes. Amen. Amen. Paul, it's so great to have you with us today. And mm -hmm. understand that Dr. Irvin Baxter mm -hmm. was a spiritual mentor to you. He really is. And uh, when, when first time I met him uh, down in Dallas, mm -hmm. and he, you know, he's one of the nice. He was absolutely one of the nicest people I ever met. That that is him so and his true. wife are wonderful people. Absolutely. Spent a lot of hours in his uh, office studying the Word of God, dig digging deep in the Revelation, mm. debating he, a little bit. But your you know, dad's still preaching. My dad's eighty-five. He's still fire. Well, he's on fire. I love it. He's preaching hard. Praise and you, God. you do you preach in his church? I do. A matter of fact, this Sunday I'm going to be getting back there in time to preach. Yes, uh, about, about six or seven times a year. Uh, I'm preaching in death. I hate to bring this up, but you had a stroke. I did. And we're sort of like stroke brothers. We are stroke brothers. Uh, you know. <laughs> and uh, it's you're too young to have a stroke. Yeah. And uh, you're back. Back. Uh, it's a miracle 
Jim, just like you. Uh, my stroke was three months before yours, and uh, my, I was on the air doing a live internet broadcast, mm. live on the air when it hit me. Mm. And four or five thousand people were watching on the channel at that moment. I didn't know where I was at. My wife come, my beautiful wife Heidi is here today. Hi oh, she Heidi, is. Well, she's here. So nice Wait, is that to right? have you here. And uh, she, uh, I was downstairs in my studio. She came down and got me off the air, shut mm -hmm. the program down. They do that. That yeah. It, it, they save us. Something about wives that <laughs> save us from <laughs> when we have our crisis moments. <laughs> and uh, but yeah, I had a stroke. Uh, it affected my walking, my balance, my speech, my memory. You know, um, and, and I tell you, it's tough when you're used to going a million miles an hour like you to, to when the doctor says, slow everything down and stop. You need to rest. How do you rest in an hour that we're in, Jim, right now with so many people needing to be saved? And, uh, and the world is really hungering for the word. There's so many events going on around the world. It's hard to sit there and rest. But... Um, God's given us strength. He's healing us. He's healing Jim. I mean, I, praise God. Yeah. Amen. We're Thank in it to win it, aren't we? Yeah. yeah. Amen. It's amazing. Amen. We're in it to win it. You seem to be doing absolutely incredible. I mean, considering. Considering, and, yeah. It's really been well, remarkable. We, yeah. and, and I went through some treatments down in the villages in Florida. Uh huh. One, first one in the world, uh, hypo, hypo chamber. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Hyperbaric, yes, hyper and where they put you in a submarine, mm -hmm. and then uh, put all that pressure, and you're breathing oxygen, mm -hmm. and you're doing specialized video games just for the areas of your brain that's injured. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. I went in a diabetic. I came out. No more metformin for me. Right. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Wow. That's true. And with all the prayers, all the prayers of the people, uh, I had a cane. That, that got thrown away. <laughs> uh, and my balance is much better. My yeah. memory is getting much better praise but the God. anointing never leaves me and and this is the truth when i'm preaching and they got video of it when i'm preaching i get comp i can walk down run i can run and walk stairs mm. when i'm in the anointing oh, when wow. i come off you know i might need a little help okay? yeah yeah <laughs> so my wife says simply stay in the anointing more often <laughs> Your seems, program, it, the it coming seems of, like the, yeah. the enemy is trying to take out the big preachers. Mm -hmm. He thinks you're a threat. He knows he's a threat. He knows you're a threat. Yeah, he knows yeah. you're a threat. Mm -hmm. But Perry Stone's been going through all oh, that. Yeah, right. yeah. There are a lot of important his, yeah. men and women who are targets right now. Amen. You need to pray for the preachers. You need yes. to pray for the Because there's warfare. Pray for and with greater is he that's in us than the he's in the world. Amen. And we can stop this warfare. And the church is going to be triumphant. Amen. 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 And, and, and I, I really want to just quickly, I know that there are people out there right now. I know you're sitting out there. And you've probably thought, I've got a bank account. I've got a savings account. I've got investments. And I don't know what I'm going to do with it. Maybe I don't have plans to leave it to my family. Trust me. Remember how when Moses was standing on top of the hill and he, he was told, as long as your arms are up, there will be victory? Wow. Yes. Yep. Sometimes the man of God or the woman of God needs someone standing there to hold his or her arms up. So true. And if you can't be there personally, you can help financially. Yes. Amen. Yes. And that's how we're going to make it. It's the right. whole church standing together. It's forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. The more we see that day coming, that's right. Yeah. We're to, we're to right. come together more, yeah. and that's going to be the key. The Church of Jesus Christ yeah. is the key to survival of the body of Christ in the last days. Your program, the coming apocalypse, is on our network, and I have the trailer. We call them trailers. Yeah. Then, of that. So let's roll that now, so people can get an idea about your show. There's an hour coming when all in the grave are going to hear his voice and come forth. But there's two resurrections, the resurrection of life and the resurrection of damnation. When the resurrection comes, again, go to John chapter 5. Remember what the Lord said. 
The Bible says, John 5, 28, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice, and they shall come forth. They have done good under the resurrection of life. That's why Jesus said in the word in Revelation, Blessed are ye have part in the first resurrection, for the second death have no power over you. It's time for the final showdown, and that's exactly what about to happen in the Bible. The Bible says every eye shall behold him. Every knee is going to bow. Every tongue is going to confess that he is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's the wonderful counselor, the almighty God, the Prince of Peace. He's the rose of Sharon. He's the lily of the valley. He's the bright in the morning star. He's the bread of heaven. He is the door into the sheepfold. I believe there will be massive earthquakes, huge tsunamis, the stars will be falling from heaven the heavens will be rolled back like a scroll the volcanoes will be erupting planet wise the poles will be shifting every unimaginable the winds will be howling the the bible says ever island and ever mountain will be moved out of its place when this gospel of the kingdom is preached into all the world for a witness unto all nations uh, then shall the end come. We're in the last days, and this gospel is going to be preached into all the world. And God's going to use every avenue, television, radio, shortwave, internet, people on foot, churches, tent revivals. It don't matter. We're going to get it done. The Bible said that his word will go out where he sends it. It will not return void. Listen, folks, Matthew 24 is before us. If one angel can bring an earthquake that, that literally shakes Jerusalem, what will it be when all of the host of heaven leave glory with Jesus Christ? The clouds are full of angels. Can you imagine the power of the resurrection when that last trump is sounded and the dead in Christ rise? Are you serious? Are you serious? You better get ready. The Lord is coming back. Praise God. He's coming back. Woo! He's coming back. Yeah, just keep preaching it. Yeah, he's preaching it. Well, he is coming back, Jim. Yeah. I mean, he's coming back. Right. Listen, I want everyone to, you, if you want to hear more of Paul Bigley preach, we have his, his CD here. We have CD, CD and CD. It's a DVD. We have a combi- it's a combination With a set. bonus CD in there. Right, because. So it has Isaiah's apocalypse. Yeah. What does that mean? It means the revelation, okay, apocalypse. Isaiah literally gives an account of the coming apocalypse in the end. And it's very close to what Jesus says in Matthew 24 and all the Revelation. That's what I've been hearing yes. about, about what you're teaching. A pole shift is in uh, Isaiah 24. It says the earth's going to flip almost upside down. Mm-hmm. That's true, people. Real like a drunken man, to and fro. So I even, I, you know, Isaiah was the greatest prophet I think it ever was, Jim. How, how did you get that? Well, I was studying the book of Isaiah about, okay, he prophesied that a child shall be born. I had a to go to prison to get that. Well, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's not fair. Don't, just don't pray that on me. Exactly. <laughs> no, you are. <laughs> You've been through he, enough now. I've been through enough. Jesus but hey, man. well, you know, when you spend, if people would spend time in the Bible is what you're saying. Yes, yeah. it is. That, and you will find these mm-hmm. unbelievable mm-hmm. nuggets that are in the Word of God. So true. You're, you, you. I, oh, I, I, we're going to be in trouble. I can see that. Yeah, you and I. Yeah. You too. Oh, well, I knew when Jim connected uh, with you, Pastor Paul, the, this was going to be uh, it, right, uh, everybody? Uh, uh, I mean, good. I, it's hard to find people that believe what I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I have well, a prison-tested theology. That's good. That's good. <laughs> but I'll tell you what. I want you to order his, his video. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it includes two DVD sets, Isaiah Apocalypse right. and the Journey CD. Yes. What is this Journey CD? Oh, now the Journey CD is my music CD. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, you, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah. Oh. Now, see, uh, how many know he sings? Do you know that? Is that why you're here? Yeah, they're here to hear Pastor <laughs> Are you serious? Paul. Crowd here today. They're here to hear you sing. Yeah, I'm shocked by the crowd. It's a wonderful crowd. It is a wonderful yeah. crowd. Up here in the hills. Yeah, man. 
You have to be coming here to come you here. You've got to seek this place out yeah, like the Bible. You are know? passing oh, by to come no. here. No. To, I want you to do a song. Let's get started. Then we're mm. going to... And then we're going to have <laughs> you preach, and Derek and Sharon preach with you, and yeah, and uh, it's great. They're going to be back tomorrow, by the way. So we're just going to get started today. I have a feeling. <laughs> blood loose all their guilty stains loose all their guilty stains loose all their guilty stains and sinners plunge beneath that flood loose all their guilty The dying thief rejoiced to see that fountain in his day. And there may I, though vile as he, wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away. Wash all my sins away And there may I go vile as he Wash all my sins away Dear dying lamb, thy precious blood Shall never, it never lose its power Till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Be saved to sin no more. Till all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin no more Ever since by faith I saw that stream Thy flowing wounds apply Redeeming love has been my theme And shall be till I die shall be till I die, and shall be till I die. Redeeming love has been my and shall be till I die. I remember that song. I'm oh, yes. Hear me by, yeah, I'm going to tell you, uh, Nazarene Church, I was born and raised. We sang that song Sang that one, didn't you? Church. Oh, yeah. We sure did. I don't know about where you were born and raised. I don't know if you remember those songs. Oh, oh wow. We used to sing those songs all the time, but how many churches have stopped preaching the blood? That's oh, right. I know. You're right. right. You're right, right Sharon. And, and without the, look, without the blood of Christ, we have nothing, okay? Nothing. Not and, too many years ago, many of the great old church groups took all the blood songs out of the Bible, oh. are, are out, of the, out of the hymnal. They said, we don't want a bloody religion. But I'll tell you, we have a bloody religion. That's right. That's right. Without the blood. That's right. It's, 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 and you know something? Insane. That's why in the CD, I wanted a, one or two hymnals in there. You know, yeah. there's a lot of other yeah. more modern songs and more newer songs, mm -hmm. but I wanted to get a couple hymnals in there because mm -hmm. we can't ever get away from our foundation yes, right. of what 
uh, saves us and sets us free. What, what is the offer on that? Did, did this you is say? for a $30 donation to the ministry. You're going to receive two disc DVD teachings plus the bonus music CD, which includes 13 songs, songs like Back to God, Dress Blues, Believe, Down to the River to Pray, Shelter Me, Lord. Amazing, amazing songs. Ain't no grave. Going to oh, hold yeah. my Woo! body down. Oh, boy. Should have sung that one. I don't know why. I didn't. Oh, yeah. My grandmother used to sing that one. Okay. Oh, yeah. oh, man. Ain't no grave. Mm -mm. Going to hold me down. But, but that's the thing. You're right. Absolutely right. Uh, I was in my mid-30s before I ever heard a sermon preach on the blood of Jesus Christ. Really? Wow. I was raised in a church, very liturgical domination, and uh -huh. I don't want to, you know, slander anybody or right. say anything negative, but uh, that's just, so, so many of the churches today just want to make it very safe and comforting, mm -hmm. and, you know, God loves us all no matter where we are and how we are, but that's not the nature of the war that we're in. This is a supernatural war. Amen. And without Amen. that blood, without that sacrifice that Jesus made on the cross, mm -hmm. we're lost. That's the right. enemy doesn't care what we believe. They just don't want us believing that one thing that's true. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Paul, you wow. believe we're in Matthew 24, right? Absolutely. Right in the middle of it. Yeah. If not throughout it. Uh, certainly, Jim, you know, it, you know, the Bible says it's beginning of sorrows. Well, if you look at false Christ, false prophets shall rise. They'll deceive many. We'll hear of wars, rumors of wars. See that you're not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. The end is not yet, for nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilence, earthquake. You know, it's all there. And then persecution of the church. That's the next verse. I used to say, well, we're in Matthew 24, 8, and all these are the beginning of sorrows. But now I say we're in verse 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you, and you'll be hated of all nations. We are. And, uh, but for my name's sake. Right. So uh, I just want to say that Jim, uh, Lori, having a network where truly the, the focus is telling people it's time to get to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it's the last days. Let's yeah. hear the voice of the prophet. Right. Amen. This is such a prophetic network. Amen. I, I was telling uh, our producer, Bob Poplin, I said, I'm so thankful that we uh, are on this network because... We've got to get this message out. Right. It, We're in the middle of Matthew 24. And look, we just went through this pandemic. Yeah. They tried to lock us down, shut That's us right. down. They shut my dad's church down two weeks. He called me on the phone and said, Paul, I don't care if they bring the National Guard. I will never close this church again. <laughs> yeah. Never. Oh, man. So, you got to give him some We've got to fight That's for what's good. right. Yeah. We good. do. You're so right. Derek... You believe the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding now. Now, I came out of prison preaching the four horses were riding. Because, and people, I guess, all thought I was crazy. So you actually think they are riding. You believe what I preach? Right. Well, we just look, we look at not only at the news headlines and see what's going on around the world, but uh, when you look at the the first century and what the apostles believed, we see that Stephen, when he was being stoned, and of course, Saul of Tarsus, Paul, was there holding the cloaks of those who were murdering Stephen. He looked up and saw the Son of Man at the right hand of God. So Jesus was at the right hand of God then. Now, in Revelation, we see that John is He's weeping. Weeping, because no one is found in heaven, on the earth, or under the earth, which is interesting. <laughs> which leads to the question, where was Jesus at that second? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why was John wow. weeping? Because Jesus wasn't there. Mm. Wow. Mm, John was good. taken back into the past to the moment between the, the crucifixion, mm -hmm. that time between the crucifixion and the mm -hmm. resurrection, because suddenly the lamb who was slain appears mm -hmm. between mm -hmm. the four creatures mm -hmm. and the Ancient of Days, and he's given the scroll. It doesn't make sense that here we are 2,000 years later and nobody knows where Jesus is yet and we're still waiting for him to show up in heaven to open the scroll. Exactly. So it happened starts, then. Exactly. He starts opening those seals right away. Yep. Those first four seals, five seals. Broken. Have been broken. Yes, they have. Mm -hmm. And we've been watching those riders for 2,000 years mm -hmm. go through the earth and just yes. ruin it mm -hmm. over and over and over again. And they are war, uh, warring against who? against the Lord Amen. and his church. And that's why we are in, you know, birth pangs? Yes. Mm -hmm. You ever have birth pangs? Mm -hmm. Definitely. Well, I've never had a child, but I've certainly read about it. How many of you ladies have had a baby? 
It gets easier toward the end, right? <laughs> Just that last trimester, uh, it even makes you and I nervous. Okay. <laughs> But we're toward the end. Praise God, the baby's almost here. Amen, in. amen. They right. really are. Well, Paul, did Isaiah prophesy about the apocalypse in chapter 24? He did, uh, Jim, he did. Even the very first verse, he said, Behold, the Lord maketh the earth empty, maketh it waste, turneth it upside down, and scattereth abroad the inhabitants. Uh, it goes on to say that, the world's going to mourn. It's going to languish. And because uh, also the earth's going to reel and rock like a drunkard. So, and then he even tells us why. Because of the transgression of sin. Because they broke the holy covenant of God. So Isaiah could see the end time apocalypse. He was the first prophet to say a child shall be born, a, a virgin shall conceive. He's the prophet that told us that Satan would be cast out of heaven in Isaiah 14. He's the prophet that says God's going to kill Lothiathan, the old serpent, the old Ooh. dragon in Revelation. Wow. Yes. He's the prophet that said, uh, you know, uh, in Isaiah 53, uh, but by his stripes were healed. Uh, he was stricken and smitten of God, a man of sorrow, queen of grief. Isaiah prophesies it from beginning to the end, and in 24, he really tells us mm -hmm. that the earth is going to go through a traumatic event. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got to be ready. That's wow, great. that's yes. great. And 26 is great. Yeah. Oh, Isaiah from front to back is just fascinating. I, one of these days, we're going to have to write a book just on Isaiah. Oh, hey, wait a minute. Uh, well. Why don't you get my DVD? <laughs> you you got the research. <laughs> yes. Yeah, everybody ordered the DVD. Get the today. DVD. Because this is great revelation it, there. It really I love it. Is. You, really want it. you really want that. Uh, do Isaiah's prophetic words mirror those of Jesus in Matthew 24, do you think? It does, when it, because of the traumatic the events. I mean, he, he wanted, the, I believe he wanted the, everyone to know in the prophecy that we would be going through, as Sharon said, birthing pains, mm -hmm. that the world was going to get into that last trimester before the end, and it would be something we didn't ex thought we'd ever see. Uh, even, I thought about it, when Christ first came, no one really could really believe that, am I living in the era of the Messiah? This can't be, right? He's the son of a carpenter. Today, people are like, are you saying this is the last days? Can't be. You know, my grandmother said that. I've been hearing about that all my life. Mm -hmm. And we think in small, very small sections of time. But the Lord told me, Jim, two weeks ago, he gave me a word. He said, Paul, I want you to quit focusing on the timeline and focus on the sign line. Because mm. oh, yeah. just follow the sign it'll lead you to the end of the time, mm -hmm. the coming of the right. Lord. So Matthew 24, I believe, is Jesus' roadmap, the entire roadmap to his coming. Yeah. It's right there. Boy, we've been preaching that, haven't we, Mondo? Absolutely. For over 23 years, again, when you came out of prison, and we will go to hear you speak, and you got invitations, you preached about this. Mm -hmm. You talked about Matthew 24. Mm -hmm. You talked about how the church needs to get ready and prepared. You were like a, a man crying out in the wilderness, mm -hmm. and no one at that moment was mm -hmm. hearing what we're teaching Nobody right now. That's true. Actually, no we, one had, we had pastors would tell us when we would go, and this is before we started television, but we'd go out and preach all around, and people, the pastors would say, you know, you, we know what you're saying, Jim, and, you know, probably you're going to, you know, mellow out a little bit, but... Um, <laughs> We really just want your testimony. And, you know, Jim and I, graciously, we get up and give our testimonies, which is great. Nothing wrong with that. It's, a wonder, it's wonderful to give your testimony, what God has done. But he had burning inside of him, Matthew 24. Yes, yes he did. And um, has continued. And he hasn't mellowed out. He's gotten stronger. <laughs> Amen. And now he brings Amen. in people like you. Uh, Pastor Paul, who's like, come on. Come on, come on. <laughs> well, you know, Jesus said we'd, we'd experience these extreme events happening all at once. Yeah. We are seeing major drought in, in the West right now. Oh, wow. Uh, it's amazing. We're what's seeing happening. fires like, my God. Yeah. The West is on fire. It yeah. really is. Really and, and we're seeing them. earthquakes. We're seeing all the other things happening.
But let me roll this report, and then we're going to comment on it. I'll, we'll be right back. In California, the horrific sound of a firestorm and the gut-wrenching sight of homes consumed by flames from a massive fire north of Lake Tahoe. And this, a fire tornado fueled by intense heat and powerful winds. It sparks memories of 2020, the worst year ever for California wildfires. This year, twice as many acres have already burned. The largest so far is this fire in Northern California, three times the size of San Francisco. Erratic winds proving dangerous for firefighters. In Oregon, the nation's biggest fire is continuing to grow exponentially. We are seeing, you know, doubling in size of the fire every 24 hours. And that wildfire near the state's southern border has affected power lines, now threatening the electric grid in parts of Oregon and California. Making conditions worse, unrelenting heat, weeks of record-breaking temperatures throughout the West. Las Vegas tying its all-time record of 117 degrees. The hottest it's ever been in Grand Junction, Colorado, 107. And Death Valley, 130, just four degrees shy of the hottest ever recorded on Earth. And new concerns tonight about a wildfire near Yosemite National Park. Ashes were falling just everywhere. We had a beautiful house, might be all gone, and what do you do? You start over, so we don't know. These, simply put, are the worst possible conditions for firefighters. Temperatures are well above 100 degrees, there's no rain, and tonight there are hundreds of residents in the same position as the Gordons. They just don't know whether their homes have burned to the ground. Paul, we've had hurricanes on the East Coast and drought and fires on the West Coast all at the same time. Is this one of the ways we know we're in the last days? Absolutely, Jim. You know, and, and then while it's so hot in the West and the dryness and the fires, east of the Mississippi, floods. Right. Detroit, Kansas City, all the way across the east, sinkholes are opening up everywhere. Um, and so we're watching these combination of things, mm -hmm. which would really, you know, it's not like, well, they had a volcano over here. Well, that happened, you know, in Mount... Uh, you know, uh, Mount Etna, whatever. No, they're all, we, we broke records the last four years in earthquakes. We've broke records every year the last three years in volcanoes. Mm -hmm. We have extreme weather conditions, heat to sub, sub temperatures, unbelievable. So all of it is combining, asteroids are racing by. This is the, this is it. We're in the final phase. I think we've turned the corner. We're on a stretch run right now, and it's time that people give their life to Jesus Christ Amen. and get born again, um, because it's a combination of things. It's, a, it it's all of them at once. Mm -hmm. I was on a, a Christian network one day, and they asked me, said, do you believe that, uh, do you think we're in the last days? And I said, think? <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, the urgency is in the emergency room, okay? Mm. And uh, America and the world is, has come to this point where it's time that we, we got to get back to the altar. Yeah. We just got to get back to the altar That's again. That's so good. Yeah. There's such they, healing at the altar. Amen. The what. first several verses of Isaiah 24 tells us of the earth wobbling to and fro. Have we seen this type of action on earth recently, do you know? Yes, the poles, the poles are shifting as we speak. I mean, mm. the due north is, a, is in Siberia right now. Yeah. And while that's happening, I just seen yesterday, there's a wobble on Mars, yeah. wow. which is going to drastically affect the weather on earth. So not only is the earth shaking, Jesus said, Luke 21, he said, for there shall be signs in the sun, the moon, the stars, and distress of nations with perplexity, the sea, the waves will be roaring, and men's hearts have failed them for fear for things come on the earth. For the powers of heaven shall be shaken. Mm. Shaken. So that means even the, even the space itself, everything up there. So I was a little bit worried the other day when Richard yeah. Branson went up there. I thought, <laughs> you know, he might have had one joy ride, but I got a ride coming pretty soon, folks. I'm seriously it. <laughs> you, you may... It's not going to cost me a quarter million dollars either to do it. But, but here the good news is that there is an awakening beginning. That's right. The Lord is preaching. The Holy Spirit is working. And you're, you're yes. experiencing that down in Florida. Oh, 
Down in Florida, Jim. Oh, my. Okay, so there's a church down there called Freedom Fellowship. Down in the villages. Okay. If you've ever been in the villages. Sure. And uh, we, we started going there high night because it went down there for treatments for the, the stroke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, there's a church there. They said, come on over. We started helping the pastor, Melvin Whittington, a wonderful pastor. That church has grown from 70 to 270 since March. That's awesome. The building was too small, so I said, why don't we pitch a tent? He went out and bought a tent that seats a thousand people. They are coming from everywhere. They're driving in from everywhere. Amazing. It's like God is, there's an outpouring. And I don't think it's just one spot. It's going to happen here. No, it's already happening here in the, uh, right here in Branson in this area. Mm -hmm. But there's an outpouring, a last day harvest. The world needs Christ. This network needs you. And Jesus is coming soon. We've got to get him in. Yeah. Yeah. Got to get him in. Paul and Derek, the, the, the pole shifting is something that was, is near the end of times. Yes. When, when the plates and all are going to shift and all yes. this shifting. And, and it says everything. It's, every island is going to be moved out of its That's place. That's right. We're, we're nearing that time, people. We're, we're right. seeing these things begin to happen. Mm-hmm. And this, you know, the fact that you guys dare preach this. Is, is scaring me. <laughs> what? Are you what serious? I'm serious. Because th- this is what I learned in the Bible by, by, when I was in the prison and I studied and I learned to what was be the signs. And I'll tell you, I saw the, be- I saw the future. Mm. And I know what's coming. Mm. And it, we're in the midst of the end times. All these things, the falling away of the America, the falling away, people backsliding, people cold, oh. the, the America, the United States was a land of God. Yep. It's a, it's a land of Satan almost now. I mean, we, we, we've turned our back on God in this country. And the, the Bible says Sharon. that the mothers will be turned against the daughters, oh. the sons it's against true. the fathers. It's true, the fathers. What are we seeing right now? There is a plan in place where children are being told, here's how you can help inform on your friends and your family. Mm. Mm -hmm. Doesn't that just chill you? Yes, absolutely. That's the kind of thing that we only thought we would ever hear about from the Soviet Union or East Germany, but now Mm -hmm. it's happening here. Just this past week, the FBI issued a statement asking people to inform on their friends and their relatives because they might be radicalized. Here are the signs to look for, and if you see something, call us and say something. And like, after all, Christians are the scariest element in our country. Yes, the most, the, the most uh, dangerous threat to American security. Praise God, we are considered scary. Yeah. <laughs> are they talking about you, Sharon? <laughs> Look, the Lord is trying to work. And sometimes we just get in the way. Yeah. And I love it. Derek, who I told, I, I dreamed many, many years ago he was going to be a preacher, and he is. He told me, Don, it's not going to happen. But you know what? I'm a radio guy. <laughs> I don't know what preacher. The, the <laughs> most inspired, and I mean that word when I say it, things that you say when you are speaking, it's when you get out of the way. You explain. You can explain it better than I can. There, there are times when... I, I, things come out of my mouth that were not planned. Mm-hmm. That when I watch a, a video later, it's like, wow, I don't remember saying that. I <laughs> right. literally don't remember saying that. Yeah. It, it's happened to me a few times. Mm-hmm. And usually when it's important, but it's also because I, I just pray whenever I speak. Just, mm-hmm. Lord, just take me out of the way because yeah. I mess things up. <laughs> I try to show off, you know, how smart I am, mm-hmm. which is a thing from when I was, you know, a kid in school and I was the smartest kid in the kindergarten. That sort of sticks with you. <laughs> but I never had that problem, Derek. I've never had that <laughs> problem. <laughs> it, can be, it can be a curse because it gets in the way. You think that you're the smartest one in the room and that prevents the wisdom of the Holy Spirit from getting through. So it's when you get yourself out of the way that the Holy Spirit can actually speak and minister. Amen. And that's when I tend to get really, really emotional. Oh, I, I love watching you when you get all emotional. It's good. Paul, you said that in, in this teaching that Isaiah 24 is also similar to Revelation's description in the heavens, such as wormwood and all that. Would you explain all that? Absolutely. In Revelation chapter 8, Jim, uh, 
the Bible says that there's going to be two deep impacts. It's going to hit the earth. And I, I really agree with Tom Horn. He's got a great book called yeah, uh, The Wormwood Prophecy, I think. Great book. Great book. And the, the Bible says there's going to be a deep impact that hits the water or hits the ocean. Mm -hmm. Wipes out a third of the ships and all, a third of the uh, creatures. And then a second one, like a star called Wormwood, hits apparently land. Brings a lot of radiation because it turns the water bitter. You know, wormwood. And many men die. Now, we have, as we speak, asteroids coming this way. They say by the year 2005, we're going to go through an asteroid. It's not just a belt. It's a unbelievable two million miles wide, several years deep of incoming near-Earth objects. This is before Apophis gets here in 2029. So... The earth is going to go through some impacts. This is, and I believe, before Jesus comes, okay, uh, we're going to experience mountains moving, as you said, islands moving, and impacts that's going to hit the earth. But no fear. We don't have the spirit of fear. We just got to understand who's in charge, Amen. you know? Amen. How soon can these things begin to happen, do you think? In the next three to five years. I would say we may see Revelation 8, by the year 2025. Oh, it's yeah. very possible. I, I Would you agree? so agree with you. Thank you. And let me tell you, our children are being trained. They're being programmed to look at all these things happening. They're going to go, oh, climate change. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's climate oh, change. Right. It's climate change, which means that we have to do everything we're told to fix the climate. Because they're saying right. we're the ones that cause it. Yes. Right. But what they're missing, and this is where the church also needs to do a better job, is understand that this is also a spiritual event. These yeah, events yeah. in Revelation 8, right. and we, we argued this in the book, uh, the, the, well, Giants forthcoming, no, oh, Zeitgeist oh, 2025, yeah. I think. Oh, yeah, yeah, um, we wrote for that, too. We, yeah, so Tom's forthcoming book yeah, yeah. pointed out that in the Old Testament period, the word star often refers to an angel, but also, get this, the second trumpet, the great mountain burning with fire, mm -hmm. one of the main nicknames of the chief god of Mesopotamia, Enlil, was Great Mountain. In fact, his temple was the Eker, the house of the mountain, or the mountain house. The book of Enoch, which we've talked about on the program before, which yeah, is not yeah. in the Bible, but right. it helps us understand some of the strange parts of the Bible. Uh, when Enoch is taken to the underworld, he's shown seven burning mountains, and he's told these are angels who disobeyed. That's where they were punished in Netherworld. That's right. So we're looking at, yes, a spiritual, a, a physical event. Yes. I agree. Yep. But we also need to remember, this is God, under God's control. It is a supernatural event. That's right. Amen. So we've got multiple facets to this. But that should make us as Christians rejoice because yeah. that means this is all under God's control. When you start talking about it in that language, hey, this is our language. We should control this. We've got, as our friend L.A. Marzulli calls it, the guidebook to the supernatural. Amen. Yeah. Amen. And most churches Amen. don't That's teach right. it. That's right. And you know, Jim, I've noticed, and you can read through the whole Bible. I did a series one time called The Prophetic Earthquakes of the Bible. Whatever's going on in the spiritual world manifests as in the physical. Yes. Constantly. Yes, absolutely. Whether it's like when Jesus rose from the dead, the Bible says one angel came and rolled the stone away. But that one angel also opened the graves of many saints that walked around, not just Jesus. Do you know when it says he returns, that he's bringing all the angels with him? So what kind of a ruckus are they going to create when they, <laughs> when they come? They're going to open all the graves. And they're, they're, Ooh, nice. I'm ready. I'm ready. I believe with all my heart that we are in the final days. Mm -hmm. We're there. Mm -hmm. I realize that we were entering this age of the four horses, and yet now these horses are riding. Mm -hmm. I believe COVID is part of it. What do you think? Oh, I so agree with you. And we've talked about this before, that uh, that fourth rider is given a name. He's called death, but it's actually Thanatos. That's the name of a Greek god. It's one of the gods that takes you to the underworld, and he rides with somebody else. Hades is there with him, and he's using Therion as his weapon. It means little beast. In other words, it's viruses and bacteria, as well as big beasts like lions and tigers and bears. Oh, my. Yeah. In fact, you know, in China, there are elephants. 
They've escaped from this. The whole elephant herd that's just been running all through the country. So we've got beasts on the loose, a lot of animals that didn't right. get fed because the zoos shut down during COVID, who didn't get tourists coming and throwing them food because there were no tourists doing COVID. So a lot of things have affected our animal population, but these little beasts, these viruses and bacteria, they are coming after us with all powers of the fallen realm. But God's allowing it. It's like hell. It's like hell on earth because it is. These writers, well, we get it. Tom Horn came to me and asked me, because I wrote a book called uh, Ebola and the Fourth Horseman. And he asked me if I would update that and write it about, you know, COVID. And I said, well, yeah, I can. And started looking at it and I prayed about it. And I talked to Derek and I said, you know, I really feel like if we're going to talk about that fourth rider, we need to talk about the other three. So that's why we wrote Giants, Gods, and Dragons. It turned into that book, and, and we actually dug in, and we think we've identified the other three. Wow. wow. Do you all believe the, the, the four horsemen of the apocalypse are riding? Yes. Absolutely. You believe Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. I have four people here. Innocent bystanders. <laughs> and they agree with me. How many of you think they're writing? <laughs> All right, got a bunch of them. And this is, this is a big sign of the last days. Yeah. Sure it's so is. big that most people, theologians, a lot of them just choke almost trying to admit it. But they know it's true. And we're living in these final days. Oh, but there's and a lot churches. of people are going to have to adjust their theology by what's going on in the world right yes, now. Yes, because there are some churches that teach, you know, it's just going to get better and better, better and better. And better. And better. Mm. It ain't going to get better. Yeah. No. no. I've read the book. <laughs> it, but, but it, it gets he, better in heaven, I'll tell you that. Yeah. <laughs> that's right. But, <laughs> and that's where we're going to have joy forever. The early church fathers understood that uh, these entities that John wrote about in the Revelation, uh, that Isaiah writes about, chapter 24, when you read the, uh, the host of heaven in heaven, on that day, which is the day of the Lord, when he pours out his wrath on an unrepentant world, on that day, the Lord will punish the host of heaven in heaven and the kings of the earth on earth. Who's the host of heaven? He's not talking about stars and comets and asteroids. No. He's talking about the heavenly host, the heavenly army. Deuteronomy 4.19, those are the gods of the pagan world. Those that God allotted to all the nations as their gods. A day is coming when these gods, small g gods, will die. Right. Yep. That has been decreed. And you yes. see it multiple times in the Old Testament, but so right here in Isaiah 24. Isaiah 24. So too. You will die like men. Exactly. When I was 19 years old, one of the great prophets, Hel uh, Helperson, uh, yes. prophesied that I would help usher in the coming of the Lord. Wow. Now, he said it. I didn't say it. Wow. And I believe God has let me live to warn you. He let me go through prison to experience the other. I have dreams that if I wrote a book about them, I, I don't know if it, it, it'd either be a great seller or it would be no one would buy it because it's so awful. Tom Horn would publish it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he would. Oh, my. It's awful. Isn't it's that awful. The truth? I wanted he you to would. sing a song, P Pastor Bagley. Do you have a short one? That we could do before we go off the air today. I, I wanted to do a song because tomorrow we'll start in with part two of this conversation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's do it. But the this king is, is coming so back. I know that, yes, people. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Oh, yeah. I saw a black man with the Bible and a sparkler in his hand. He was holding a tent revival and running a firework stand. He said the end of the world is coming, so you better get on your knees. Today bottle rockets are two for one, but salvation's free. He said I quit my job at the big church where the milk and money flowed to sell cherry bombs for Jesus in a tent beside the road. I ain't in it for the money, those cars they pass on by. But I pay the rent on New Year's and the 4th of July. Here at the Holy Ghost, Big Bang Theory. 
Pentecostal fire and brimstone Mission temple fireworks stand He said fireworks are dangerous They can blow up in your face You better read the instructions Like the fuse and get away These things are made in China So it's easy to see My man who first Buddha He ain't got no guarantee That this a holy ghost Everybody get up! Fire and brimstone Mission Temple Fireworks Stand Yeah! High five your neighbor next to you and say We're going to have a revival here in the Ozark Mountains Selling it's all going up in smoke. This world is like atomic bomb, it's ready to explode. And when the trumpet sounds and the Lord comes back, I promise you one thing I'll be a human bottle rocket and I'll go out with a bang just like the Holy Ghost. Big Bang Theory, Pentecostal, Fire and Brimstone. Mission Temple Fireworks Stand. I said the Holy Ghost. Big Bang Theory. Pentecostal. Fire Brimstone. It's Mission Temple Fireworks Stand. Mission Temple Fireworks Stand. I said Mission Temple Fireworks Stand. Yeah! Somebody shout! Somebody praise the Lord! Hey, man! <laughs> Pastor Paul Bagley! So all that music's on this. When you get the bonus with the Isaiah Apocalypse, uh, the two DVD set, and then the bonus CD yes. of the music. Mm -hmm. So you get all of that for a gift of what? $30. Just $30. Just $30. But we also do have a three pack. So you can order the Isaiah's Apocalypse three pack offer for a $60 donation, which includes shipping and handling. So you're going to receive the three DVD set plus a bonus CDs. And that's all for just a donation of $60 to the ministry. Well, I hope everybody has ordered my book this week. Yes. And they, uh, people are telling me it's amazing read. And so I hope you'll get it and read it. And uh, your, your, your $30 is going to help us to stay on the air, to pay our bills and all. So order my book today and uh, you can make it. Amen. You, Amen. Yes, you can. Amen. Amen. Our time's gone Please for today. Right Paul will be back with us tomorrow along with Derek and Sharon Gilbert. So don't miss tomorrow's broadcast. We do have to go. Call us right now. What's the number, Lori? Just call us at 1-888-988-1588 or go to the website, jimbakershow.com. God loves you. He really does. Bye-bye for today. Bye-bye. We love Paul you. Baker, Derek, and Sharon Gilbert for being with us.